Hello everybody, welcome to the CAD Cage, brought to you by Zentech Consultants. In the CAD Cage, we put two CAD systems side by side and test out a, an important design function to see if one system makes your life easier than the other, or not. Uh, so let's get started with today's competitors. We're going to be using AutoCAD and BricsCAD. Uh, and today I want to look at kind of doing some editing and layout of basic geometry, right? Something we work with a thousand times a day. All right, so here on my screen, I've got AutoCAD over here on the left side of my screen, and I've got BricsCAD over here on the right. And I just have two blank, completely empty drawings, right? Where we'd be starting with a new new layout design kind of setup. Um, and I'm going to start over here on the left with, with AutoCAD. All right, and we're going to go ahead and we're just going to draw a basic rectangle, right? Very simple. I'm just going to kind of click and drag your rectangle at a random size. Don't really care what that size is, all right? And then I'm going to go over and do the same thing over in BricsCAD, just kind of drag and not look at any sizes, just kind of making some basic rectangular shapes that we want to edit. Now, this is a pretty common setup, right, where we wind up with, you know, rectangle that somebody drew or we drew, we were just sketching a quick layout. Now we need to get things to specific sizes, right? And both systems do this really well. Um, I'm going to start over here in AutoCAD, right? And we've got our dynamic input turned on, kind of down on our control panel on there in the bottom. All right, if I go to my grip edit, and I just hover over the grip and I select it, you see the nice thing is I get all of my dynamic input. So here I can actually go in and start adjusting the size, right? So you can see that my rectangle I drew is 9 and 5 16 inches by 7 and an eighth inch. I, and maybe I need this to be a 12 by 12, you know, it's a column or a pier or something. Now, the limit that you have here in AutoCAD is that I can easily go in, I can use the tab key to kind of cycle through my dynamic input fields and adjust these. So I can set this to a 12 inch. But here's what happens. Right? If I just set that to 12 and I hit enter, ah, you can see that what I'm doing here is I'm editing one vertex at a time. Now, that's not terrible. I can just now go over to this one, right? And again, I click it and then I have to tab to get this one to be 12 as well. Right? right, and then I have to go do it again over here. <laughs> you kind of, you know, you get the, it's not bad, right? I can easily go in and I can set each of these to 12. And you see, I have to set each corner kind of one at a time. Right, and then luckily enough, that's it, I'm on the right side, so I can set that to 12. No problem, right? That works just fine. In BricsCAD, I can do exactly the same thing. You see, if I come over here and I hit my grip points, I get the same features, right? And I can use the tab key with my dynamic input to adjust the sizes, right? But I get kind of the same thing where it's, in this mode, just adjusting one vertex at a time. Now, what I'm going to show you here in BricsCAD, which I really like, is a tool that they refer to as their nearest distance tool. And it's not a separate tool. It's just kind of built into the way BricsCAD works. Uh, and it's actually not the first time I've talked about it here on the CAD cage. I talked about it, I think, once before dealing with uh, mechanical design layout and piping and so on. And in that, I, I kind of discussed it a little bit. But I want to show that it works really, really well for basic geometry. All right, and the way that nearest distance, it's an automatic identification by your selection process. So if I want to go in here, I can hold down my control key. All right, and I can just pick this line here and this line here, holding down the control key. And you see that it gives me that distance. And here's what's nice about this. When I go and I put in the 12 here, you see it actually moves. It doesn't use each individual vertex. And I can go the other way. And, and the nice thing about this is, you know, when you click on this with the control key, the one that I select first stays where it is. So if I have a specific direction, I need this to go up or down. All right, when I go in and put in my 12, all right, the one I pick first won't move. So you see how the, you know, the second one I picked was up here. So you see it's a lot quicker, a lot easier to be able to edit basic geometry that way, uh, it, you know, in terms of rectangles. Um, you know, some of the other basic, you know, geometric components that we work with all the time. I'll go back over to here to cut our, our circles. All right, and I can just go in kind of the same thing. I'm just going to randomly draw a circle. All right, same thing over here. I'm going to go into BricsCAD and just randomly draw a circle over here on the side. All right, processes are the same. And with circles, they're actually both identical. I can go into any circle, and as long as I have my dynamic input turned on, I, I can just pick a specific grip, and then I can adjust the radius to something I need. So if I need, you know, an 8-inch uh, an radius on my circle, no problem, right? I do that, and I can do exactly the same thing over here. There's no real difference for a circle in terms of, the the uh, the nearest distance right because you're not you're not comparing two kind of separate setups so yeah it can easily get the exact same results right so pretty much between AutoCAD and BricsCAD with the circle geometry it's a watch exactly the same functionality now the other area where I think we all work quite a lot um, in both of these systems with latent design is with the polylines all right so I'm just going to draw a polyline I'm just going to kind of go over here. and again I'm not really going to pay attention to my dynamics I'm just going to 
Uh, I'm going to turn on my ortho here real quick, and I'm just going to sketch over, over, kind of on an angle, over, and then off, right, and call it a day, right? Same kind of thing. And I'll actually go so far as to just kind of copy and paste that from AutoCAD over to BricsCAD, right? So I have the exact same thing, and I'll have to redraw it. So there you go. You see, I kind of have that same exact polyline in both setups, right? And I got the, the exact same features, right? I can grip the points here in AutoCAD, right? And let's say that I needed to, to put a set distance between this, this linear segment here and this one up here, right? So I can go in here, I can hit the grips, uh, but you see it's a little hard for me to do that because it's kind of following with the dynamic input along the angles of the line. So what I kind of have to do is, is use the distance command, right? And kind of, you know, measure, right, from here. And then I have to go perpendicular to that line, right? Oop, I didn't hit my perpendicular, there we go. Perpendicular to that to kind of get a distance and that's zero foot 10 and 11 and I have to do the math. So if I want that to be like a 15 inch gap, right? From, from this line horizontal to this line, I need to, you know, measure vertically, I need a 15 inch gap. I have to do some offsets and some creative construction lines to make that happen in Autodesk, okay? It can be a little tough, right? The dynamic input doesn't quite work that way. Again, coming over here, just to show you that when I deal with that in BricsCAD, what I like about this, I can do the same thing, right? Even using a polyline, right? I get the same basic controls, right? So I have the same issue, right? With just the dynamic input, but that nearest distance feature that they have allows me to just go in, I'm going to hold the control line or the control key down on my keyboard. And I'm going to select this first line. See, it picks that segment. Now I'm going to pick this segment up here, all right? And you see, it's giving me the distance between them. All right, so I can easily go in and I can adjust that specific length along that line, all right? So if I want to go in here and I say, hey, that's got to be, you know, 15. Oops, sorry, I got to click into that, all right? And make that 15. Notice that it follows it along that specific line, all right? And I'll also do kind of the same thing here in both of these, all right? With a, uh, I'll do it this way with kind of an orthogonal set, all right? And again, I'll just kind of copy and, and paste it from one to the other to show that you can work between these two systems very, very easily, All right? Um, so again, you know, in AutoCAD, right, just to show you the same kind of concept, I, I can go in here and it'll give me that distance, right, if I tab over to it, right? But if I try to make that, you know, 15, oh, you see what happened? Two things. Number one, it only moved one vertex and it moved it in the wrong direction. I wanted it to go from there up. I, and, and that's really kind of difficult. It's one of the problems you run into with AutoCAD. Whereas here, it becomes very easy to do that just by using the control line. This one, the first one I pick is gonna stay where it is. This is the next one. You see that now I can just go into there and put in my 15. And if you watch, the top line will move up towards the top of the screen and the bottom line stays where it is. Makes it a lot easier, I find, you know, when you're dealing with, with things to, to work uh, with that nearest distance. The one last thing I will show you about this is is what I call gapping or, or, or spacing layout things. All right, so let's say that, you know, between, you know, this square and this circle, right, in AutoCAD, we need like an eight inch gap. How do we do that? Well, all right, you know, with Auto, it's not terrible. I can, I can offset this eight inches, all right, and then I can, you know, move this, right, so I can go in, I can offset, you know, eight inches in AutoCAD, bring it out, right, and then I can go ahead and move this, right, from the quadrant, right, I got to grab the quadrant point, and then I can run it, you know, perpendicular to that, there we go, then I have to go back and erase this, okay, that's not terrible at all, I've been doing that for, you know, 30 plus years, works real well, for me, it's kind of second nature, I can do that in a few seconds, I'm sure most of you guys can as well, perfectly good tool, but again, the same thing, what I really do like about dealing with Bricks Cat is I don't have to deal with any of those commands, I have to do any offsets, erases, measures, you know, uh, O-snap commands, all I have to do here is just hold down that control key again and go, right, you know, look from here to here. You see, it finds the nearest distance. And I can just go in and say, that's eight. It just, it finds the gap between any two objects that you select. And then you can change that value. That's it. In any direction, right? And you see that by default, if I just pick that object and that object, see, it finds the nearest distance. What the other thing that I really just wanted to show you here is what if I wanted to move this and I needed a, a set gap from this back line? to that circle for some reason. Not a problem. That's where you use that control select. I need a gap from that to this. Now you see it's measuring the distance from that back line over. And you can say, hey, now that's a 20 inches. That's actually supposed to be 24 inches. There it is. Now I'm set. So 
I really, really like that. There's nothing at all wrong with the way that AutoCAD deals with geometry and editing, but I think that that additional uh, ability to use the control select and get that better control with the nearest distance gives the win for today to BricsCAD. All right, folks, we're out of here, and we'll catch you next time in the CAD cage.